<laughs> hey you guys, welcome back to Bibs Vibe. I'm Vivian Camille, and today we're talking about, yes you guessed it, running recovery. In my 50k training video, I talked about something called the recovery plan. So today I wanted to clarify what that is, delve into how to use it, and then three, show you how I use it to be intentional with my recovery because most runners are not great at recovering well. We can run all the time until we can't and we're injured and we're burned out. So because I'm not a good recoverer, this is something that I do in order to prioritize that recovery. What I've done is broken the run experience into three categories, pre-run, run itself and post run. You choose one method of recovery in each of the categories and then you prioritize those throughout your week. In the coming weeks, I'm gonna go even farther into why these methods are important in your recovery and give you more examples of the things I do to recover. Number one are the recovery runs themselves. You gotta run slow to run fast. If you can take your recovery runs seriously, then you can take those intense runs super seriously, if you want. So basically, I've talked about it before, but if you're going to do a recovery run, it's gonna be two to three minutes slower than your race pace. A way that you can make sure you get your recovery run in and actually slow that pace down is run with somebody who's slower than you or run with someone who's tapering. Number two is food. I talk about food a lot because I like food a lot, but it's very important before you run, during your run, and especially after your run. So what are you eating? What time are you eating? We're gonna be talking more about that recovery window and I'm gonna give you some fun recipes that I use so that you can use them too if you like them. The third method of recovery is the actual recovery day. Slash naps, slash eight hours of sleep, slash spa day. In the past when I've taken a recovery day, I usually end up doing something very active and I'm usually on my feet all day. So I've had to focus on that recovery day, set it aside as a recovery day, and be intentional with that time. That's actually keeping my feet up on the couch, watching TV maybe, reading a book, working on the computer, whatever it may be. Um, but the actual recovery days are super important. Um, if you are an active person, go for a swim or aqua jog, but I think it's very important that your body rest for an entire day. Some people need two recovery days, some even need three. And that is all going to pit to depend on your schedule, your needs, and how you have tailored your training. The fourth method might not be considered recovery, but I call it recovery, and that is injury prevention. Right now I'm dealing with some foot things, so I'm doing my very best to allow adequate time for healing. I'm making sure I have KT tape on, and doing everything I can to facilitate a healing sort of environment for this foot of mine. And yes, that has meant taking almost three weeks off now. Yes. You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. In my opinion and in my experience, it's a lot better to take a couple miles off of your training rather than be out three months because you push too hard and you tear a ligament. Tore. You tore a ligament. That's correct. Okay, number five. I always have a little bit of a hokey element in my training, whether that's visualization, meditation, or having your very own dance party. Have a dance party, that's always a solution. This method pretty much encompasses all of that. We're gonna be very intentional with reducing all the stress we can, especially mental stress, there's tons of stressors throughout the day, and so meditation, prayer, singing a song, or going to lunch with friends, those things are all gonna reduce the stress that you have in your life, um, or they should, I don't know. Maybe you need to do ax throwing or go to one of those car smashing 
places. I never understood that, but might work for you. Okay, so stick with me. We've got our five methods. The methods in which we can apply to our lives, integrate into the daily routine. So now we're gonna ask three questions. What is the reality of the situation? Do you have children? Is it impossible to get a midday nap? Where are you gonna find time to add an additional five to 15 minutes of stretching? Are you gonna have to take out some of your run? Are you not willing to do that? Um, are you gonna have to start stretching while you watch your favorite TV show or as you scroll through Instagram? Are you going to set aside more time to meal prep on Sunday so that you do have meals ready to go when you get off the trail or the track? And then the last question I don't think many people think about is how much money are you willing to spend on your recovery? I'll tell you for me, my money gets spent on good food that I cook, that I buy at the grocery store. I don't buy everything organic, but I try and stick with fruits, veggies, and good quality meat. And massages. I spend $60 a month with a Massage Envy membership, and so I get a massage every single month. I plan that massage on my highest mileage week. It is the carrot at the end of the week, so it gets me going. It motivates me to get those runs in. And then at the end, I have a very, very nice stress-reducing reward. It is the best thing since last bread. So this is a great video and all. We've talked a lot about recovery, but if you don't actually take the steps to recover, then that's just not gonna help you now, is it? I've created this infographic. It's linked down below. And this is just another tool for you to slap at the front of your running log or on a wall or your refrigerator or whatever, just as a reminder to be intentional with your time and with your recovery. You are an athlete 24 seven, so act like it by treating your body properly. There's three categories. Each week I pick one thing out of each category that I wanna focus on. So for this week, I really want to focus on eight hours of sleep. That's a pre-run thing. That can also be in the post-run. Some of these are kind of fluid. During the run, I wanted to make sure that I was getting in good recovery runs at recovery pace, because that's a hard thing for me sometimes, and I know a lot of other runners struggle with that. And post-run, this week I have really worked on proper nutrition after I run like immediately after I run. I set a timer for 15 minutes and it's like a race to the refrigerator. So that is how you can use this tool if you choose to do so. That's about all I've got for today. In the coming weeks, like I said, we're gonna go even deeper into examples, real life situations, recipes, and things of the sort. So you can look forward to that. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel subscribe wherever it is, I think it's here, if you're interested in any of those. And comment below if you have any specific content that you would like to see or any other ideas that you might have involving recovery. Thanks so much for watching, you guys, and happy trails.